Hey everyone, welcome back. Look what the cat dragged in. This is a 1984 BMW 733 something. It's actually in pretty good condition. It's just dirty. It's been sitting outside for about two years. Totally dead. I actually took the battery out of my Subaru. This one would not even charge. It is not too bad. Just needs a good cleanup. No rust, well, minimal rust. Original wheels. All right. I'm pretty sure this battery has some juice in it. Now, the last time it drove was two years ago, then it um, did not want to start, so it was just left. Let's see what happens. That's exactly what it was doing. Two years ago. And it's still doing it. Transmission fluid leak. Probably this line here, I'm guessing. Or maybe the main seal. This could also be the main seal in the front. Look how rusty the rotor is. Fuel lines. So something made it, it's not the fuel lines that are leaking, it's oil that just made it, made it there. Brake lines. Fuel lines a bit rusty here. Check out these cracks. Old rubber. Rear differential. Small leak on the oil seal here. Both sides. Also on the cover. Same story with the rear rotors. Yep, everything's binding on the rust. Yep. 
Yep. Rusty ball joint. Or whatever is in there. What is this the sway bar link? Is this, is this a 80s sway bar? No, it's a control arm. Lower rear control arm. And I guess control arm link. No idea what to call this, but it does sure look like a just some kind of a link between the subframe here or the cross member and the control arm. The floor is not too bad. I mean, it's it's almost perfect, I would say. There are rust spots here and there, but nothing serious. All right. All the six spark plugs. This one gave me a workout, but they look just terrible, awful. Especially this one. I mean, look at the carbon buildup and the uh, the porcelain on top is missing. Here half of it is missing, and this one, all of it, I mean, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, I don't know if I should uh, laugh or cry, see, I mean, it should look, well, I was going to say it, sh it should look more or less like this, L let's say like this one, but see how this one is barely sticking out. Yeah, they've been there for a while. So I think uh, BMW, the far cylinder from the front of the car is number one, two, three, four, five, six. So number six being the worst, then five. Yeah, I would say then four and then one through three, they're about the same. And these are Bosch BMW R6 862.
did the spark plugs. There's still maybe a problem with uh, fuel delivery, but I'm gonna try it anyways with the new spark plugs. Yep. Okay, I added fuel just for the hell of it. Let's see what happens. It's actually not cranking very healthy. You hear the little... Uh... How do I explain this? It's not two, 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 you know, even an even crank, it's two, 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 but it's, you know, much faster, obviously. I wonder if there is uh, no compression in one of the cylinders, but that wouldn't cause it to not start. So there's definitely a uh, fuel problem. I'm going to raise it up and uh, remove the fuel filter. Okay, let's see what we got here. Looks like... This guy here is the fuel filter and this guy here is the fuel pump. Alright, two wires going into the pump. Upper says ground, lower says ground with the key off. Let's see what happens with the key on. Key is on. I didn't hear the pump at all. Ground also ground got no power to the pump just to be sure I'm gonna jump the fuel pump sounds like it's working okay I checked all the fuses the relays the fuses are good uh, there is no uh, list uh, what relay does what not even it doesn't exist in the book so switch them around uh, here and there there is seven relays eight relays switched worse was switching them around uh, no luck there I'm gonna try and power up the fuel pump from a different source different battery and try starting it. So it's not starting with the pump being on all the time. Hmm. We may be faced with two issues electrical to the pump and fuel delivery to the engine i think i'm gonna remove the fuel line from the filter fuel filter and run them run the pump and see if any fuel comes out okay as you can see some fuel came out when i took the line out from the fuel filter there was pressure build up on the line the guy on the left and then when I go to short the uh, fuel pump there it goes from the fuel pump ah, so I'm gonna put this back together and go back to, to under the hood alright got fuel going by shorting the fuel pump looks like you know what old fuel but it's not too bad it's not that bad i've seen much worse so fuel is going in into the fuel rail did i check for spark I think it's safe to say that we got no spark. Okay, now testing straight from the coil.
We had one weak spark. Got the coil out. This is the positive side. Ignition is on. We got power. This should be open. Okay. So power. Alright, now we got power. What the hell? I just didn't get power. I switched wires using the number five, I believe, wire from cylinder number five. <laughs> All right, decided to do a compression test. Still no, not getting fuel uh, right before the fuel line and not getting spark. It's kind of suspicious that two that we're having the two issues together no fuel no spark i do i do get power at the coil but no spark straight from the coil now if i had fuel if i had power to the fuel pump then i would dig into the crankshaft sensor and and uh, test that but since it's not easy it's not a it's not a five minute job the crank sensor is actually wired into this plug this is this is the wire from the crank sensor and there's no plug in between this uh, this guy here and the actual sensor uh, yeah and I don't have any schematics I don't know which um, pin is for the sensor but since I don't like the way this thing cranks I decided to do a compression test because if the engine is shot, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's the one of the valves, the you know the head needs to needs a rebuild, or uh, one of the piston rings, or maybe any of the piston rings uh, are bad, then the issue with the fuel and the uh, no spark, which is probably a totally different issue, separate issue. Uh, then uh, we're looking at a, uh, a big bill over here. So maybe it's just not worth getting into it that deep. Okay, did a test. Started with cylinder six. I got 149. Okay, so number five, uh, 55. About 55. <laughs> Number four, 151, two, three, maybe. I don't know, it's hard to say there's numbers are only read 150 180 so whatever it's good <laughs> another 150 that was number three Number two, 150. <laughs> Number one, 155. <sighs> yep, as suspected. Now at this point, I could go on and do a, a leak down test to determine if it's the um, in, an exhaust valve, intake valve, uh, or piston rings but you gotta take it apart anyways 
at this point with this kind of um, old engine I don't even know how many miles this thing has so it's got 114,000 you know it's it's what it says maybe more who knows so yeah I think I'm done with this I'm gonna put it back together and call it a day we'll see what the owner will say an ECU and a whole and a full uh, engine rebuild it's gonna cost quite a bit the car in my opinion it's not worth doing it it's not that special it is a nice car you know if, if this was the turbo version I don't really know much about these uh, these models but uh, I'm pretty sure this is not something uh, special that was made back then is it worth it it's only up to the customer all right guys thanks for watching on this unfortunate outcome I'll see you soon